Let's talk about a type of word problems or applications that are fall under something called mixture problem. And mixture problem doesn't always mean you're adding liquids. It could be an investment portfolio made up of CDs, stocks, bonds. You want to figure out how much to invest in CDs and bonds so that your total interest is a particular amount. You could also be working with actual mixtures like Let's say you are made throwing a party, grape juice concentrate, water, salsa water, and you are making punch. And you want to, the punch to be a particular concentration, so that's a mixture problem. So let's take an example of a mixture problem. Uh, like say you have multiple jobs and you want to make a certain amount of money. So how many hours of work do you need to ask for at each of your jobs? If you want to make $460 a week and you're willing to work 50 hours a week, and the two jobs on campus are tutoring at the math lab for $8 per hour and at the library front desk where you're going to get paid $9.50 per hour. So pause the video here and think about how you would approach this kind of problem and solve. So go ahead, pause the video here, see what you can do. Use all the techniques we have learned so far. Remember, any unknown gets variable. All the information buried in the words, put them in a chart form. That will allow you to create equations either one equation or two equations if it's a system. So go ahead and make a chart. All right, so suppose here's my chart has, you have a math job, you have a library job, uh, your pay rate at math job is $8 an hour, library is $9.50 per hour, and then you have number of hours we don't know. We'll call M for math job, N for number of hours at the library. The total hours you're willing to work is 50, which means total means sum or add. So M plus N is 50. What, else, what other information do you have that we haven't recorded yet? Well, we have, if you work, say, 2 hours at $8 per hour, you'll make $16. If you work M hours, it'll be 8 times M. And so same with $9.50 times N. And the total is the two dollar amounts you make at each of your jobs. You want that to add up to 460. So we have two equations here. M plus N equals 50. 8M plus 950N equals 460. So suddenly now you have a system of equations. Once you have that, now you know what to do. So usually, when you read words, if you can create a chart, label everything, the equations will pop right out, and you'll be able to solve. So now you know how to solve these. So pause the video here, see what you can do. Go ahead, finish the problem. All right, so here we have you can use substitution, you can use elimination. I'm going to use the elimination, so let's multiply the first equation by negative 8. So we have negative 8m minus 8n, 8 times 50 will give you 400. And so now what? Add, good. Add the two equations and that will give you 950 minus 8 is 1.5n. And negative 400 plus 460 will give you 60. So 60 divided by 1.5, which will give you 50. So we have, so 60 divided by 1.5 will give you 40. And the total number of hours that you work is 50, which means that the M would have to be 10 hours. Your final answer to any problem that has words in it is going to be a sentence. So always write a sentence explaining what you just did. You will need to work 10 hours at your math tutoring job and 40 hours at the library and that will give you the money that you were looking for which is $460 per week.
All right, let's do a problem where you are told that a theater sold 550 tickets. Some were discounted and sold for $6 each, with the remaining tickets were sold for a full price of $8 a ticket. If the total revenue from ticket sales was $4,050, how many of each type of ticket was sold? So go ahead, pause the video here and see what you can do. Again, it's very important that you take time and make charts so that your information given to you is organized. So go ahead, be ready to make a chart. All right, assuming you've come back, let's take a look. So we need some variables. So let me say D, it doesn't matter what variables you use. D is discounted tickets, F is full price tickets. And so now our chart will look like we have $6 a ticket for discounted ticket, $8 per ticket for full price. D is the number of tickets for discounted tickets. So that's six times D is the money you will collect from discounted tickets. 8 times F will be the amount of money you collected from full price tickets. And we know that the total number of tickets sold is 550. So D plus F is 550. And the total money you made from selling your tickets is 4050. So that will be 6D plus 8F is 4050. And then you have a system of equations and then solve. Assuming you have solved the system, let's take a look. If you have not solved, pause the video here and do it, please. So we can either get rid of D or F. If you multiply everything by negative 8, you'll get rid of D. If you multiply by negative 6, you'll get rid of D. So we have negative 6D minus 6F equals negative 3300. And then add, which will give you 2F equals, yep, good, 750. And then divide both sides by 2. And so now we have the total number of tickets is 550. So D plus 375 is 550. So here we go. So we have, our final answer has to be in words. So you're going to say that you sold 175 discounted tickets and 375 full price tickets. All right, let's talk about this problem. Pause the video here, see what you can do. Campus Union wants to make a vanilla hazelnut blend of coffee beans, 5.75 per pound. Vanilla coffee bean costs four per pound and hazelnut $11 a pound. How many of each should you mix to make 20 pounds of the blend? Go ahead and do this yourself. And then we'll discuss it, of course. So let's say V is the number of pounds of vanilla beans and H is the number of pounds of hazelnuts, flavored beans. And again, organize the information like we've done before. And again, you can see the price per pound times number of pounds is the cost of that flavor. Same thing here, cost of the hazelnut flavor is $11 times H. Addition of the two number of pounds is 20. And the total cost together here is $5.75 times the 20 pounds that you want to make. So let's take a look then. This is our system. Multiply top row by negative 4. Add the 2 and solve for H. And that gives you that you should mix 15 pounds of the vanilla flavored beans and 5 pounds of the hazelnut flavored beans so that you can make 20 pounds that sell at $5.75 per pound. So do all problems work out like that? All right, pause the video and see if you can attempt this problem. Solve it visually, and then also solve it with a chart, and then we'll discuss things together. So go ahead and try that, please. Are you trying or are you just waiting for me to do it? Go ahead, keep trying. Don't get flustered. Keep your focus. Breathe. Show compassion to yourself. 
problems like these might take longer for some of you and it is okay just take time just make sure you learn to make charts so that your information is organized you can set up the same way or you can do it visually assuming you have come back let's take a look so we're going to do it visually so here's 10 liters which are at 30% antifreeze. And you can see that we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. We have 10 liters. So we have 30 green, which means that's 30 out of 100 or 30% antifreeze solution, 70% water. So what does it mean to drain and replace? So drain means what? You're going to take, remove the liquid out. And so if I remove one liter, it will be this whole strip because you're removing the mixture. If I remove another liter, it will look like this. And then after you drain it, what are you doing? You're replacing it with pure antifreeze. All right, so let's take a look. So here we have one liter drained. And if we replace that one liter with pure antifreeze, it will look something like that. Now what? What does that mean? Think about it. So remember, the 30%, that is our original. So this additional seven boxes that we inherited, that's the new amount of antifreeze in the entire solution because draining and replacing these three boxes just gave us what we had before. And so that means if we drain one liter, we got seven extra percent, or now our solution is 37% time freeze. Okay, what if you drain another liter and replace that with pure antifreeze? Well, what does that happen? That means you got seven more boxes, and so a total of 14, because all of these six boxes right here just made it 30% plus seven from before, and these new sevens total 14 over 30, so that means 44% antifreeze. So let's see that again. So we drain one liter, replaced with pure antifreeze. We got one liter pure antifreeze added, which just gave us seven extra antifreeze percent. If you drain another liter, you got another seven extra percent which is a total of 44% antifreeze. And that's what we wanted, 44% antifreeze. So you have to drain two liters. See if you can do the same problem algebraically. We'll let you do that on your own. All right, let's try another method. Let's say A is the number of liters to be drained and replaced with pure antifreeze. So organizing our information in the chart gives us original 30%. We have 10 liters which means that number of liters of antifreeze is 0 0.30 times 10. You drain the 30% A amount because you're draining A liters, which means you're removing 0 0.30 A of antifreeze and you're replacing it with 100% antifreeze, so which would be adding a 1.00 A. And resulting solution has to be 44% of 10 liters so what does that mean? That means that 0 0.30 times 10 minus 0 0.30a plus 1.00a should equal 0.44 times 10. And then you solve for your a. And there you go. So they're saying that we should replace 2 liters of the solution. That's how you would do it algebraically. Let's talk about a different kind of problems, rate problems. Rate problems are, for example, if you were traveling uh, in a car, then you might care about distance, rate, and time connection. What is that? Amount of distance you travel depends on how fast you're going and for how long. And so in physics, one of the connections is distance is rate times time. When you solve problems having distance and rate and time in it, you can use this connection or this formula in various ways. Either the way you see it, distance equals rate times time, or that the distance rate ratio is time, 
or the distance time ratio is rate. So you can manipulate the formulas as you wish. Other types of problems that behave similarly to the distance rate time connection are different kind of jobs you might do, like copying textbook, or if you have a job at a copy place, how fast the machine works will tell you how long the job will take. So a lot of real life situations have this kind of connections that are connected to each other in formulas where you have amount of job done, depends on how fast somebody is working or the machine is working and how long. All right, let's try another one on your own. Set up table if necessary. Remember, when you have unknowns, you're going to call them variables. So let's say they're asking us to find the speed of the bicyclist in still air and speed of the wind. So we have two things happening here. So let's say x and y are the variables here. Let's say x is the speed of the bicyclist in still air and y is the speed of the wind. So let's take a look at the information we have. We have the bicyclist going x miles per hour. If you're going against the wind, the wind is pushing you backwards, which means what would your actual speed be? It will not be x miles per hour, but it will be x minus y miles per hour because the wind is pushing against you. What if you're going with the wind? So then you're going x miles per hour this way, and the wind is pushing you again y miles per hour in that same direction. So this time your speed will be x plus y. So let's put that information in our chart. So we are, when you're going against the wind, rate is x minus y. When you're going with the wind, rate is x plus y. And so now the time in hours, so look, we have 2 hours and 15 minutes. So 2 hours and 15 minutes, which is 9 quarters, which is 2 and a quarter basically, right? And the distance you're traveling is 30 against the wind and 45 with the wind. So we have two equations, and so now we have a system of equations. And now we can solve it. So 30 equals x minus y times 9 quarters. 45 equals x plus y times 9 quarters. Divide both sides by 9 quarters to get this new system. And now simplify. Now what do you do here? You can add the two equations to get a third equation. So we get 2x equals 40 thirds plus 20 and solve for x. So divide everything by 2. And your answer will be 16 and 2 thirds miles per hour. And then substitute that back in, allowing you to get the y. So y would be 3 and a third miles per hour. Again, here, remember to check reasonability. If you get the wind speed to be like 50 miles per hour, then you know something is not quite right, because that seems unreasonable. You're not going to be able to ride your bicycle in that speed. So this is reasonable. And this is reasonable speed for a bicycle as well. So our answer then would be that the speed of the bicycle in still air is 16 and 2 thirds miles per hour, and the wind speed is 3 and a third mile per hour. All right, let's see if you can do this next problem. So pause the video here and do the problem. Go ahead. Don't freak out on me now. Remember, in this moment, you are a mathematician. If you look at this problem and you feel like, oh my god, I'm not doing this, just the words alone are making you stressed out, you are not alone. I also experienced exactly the same emotions when I was a student, so I know what some of you might be feeling. But remember, in this moment, you are a mathematician. You have a big toolbox in your head. We can do this problem. All you have to do is have patience to read the words, but you also have to get skills on scanning the problem and extracting only the information that you need. So look for words like find, how fast, where, what. Those are questions, and that will give you your variables. Once you have your variables, scan the problem for important information to organize in a chart form, and then you'll be home free because then you'll know exactly what to do, and then you'll just solve the problem flawlessly. All right, so pause the video here, see what you can do. Assuming you have returned, let's start with what? 
So if you scan the problem, at the end it says find wind speed and speed of plane in still air. So let's get our variables first. What do you think we should pick for the variables for the wind speed and the plane in still air? So let's say W, I pick for the speed of the wind in miles per hour. And let's say I pick P for the speed of the plane without any wind in miles per hour. And so now what? We now can read. We have a 1,100 miles distance to travel from Milwaukee, Wisconsin to Boston, Massachusetts. It takes you two hours with the wind and two hours, 25 minutes coming back. This is assuming that the speed of the wind is the same and also that the plane speed going to Boston and coming back is the same. So use the system of equations to describe this event, and then we have to find the variables that we just have. So first of all, if you look, our hours, two hours, and then two hours, 25 minutes. So either you convert everything to minutes or everything to hours. So let's bring our handy dandy for my eyes only column. You didn't think we forgot that, did you? So here we go, 2 hours and 25 minutes. 25 minutes over 60 minutes will give you the number of hours. So it's 2 and 5 twelfths of an hour. If you convert that mixed number to a fraction, you will get 29 twelfths. So now we're ready to fill our chart. We have rate, time, and distance. Again, just like previous problem, with the wind, so the wind is helping you. So plane speed plus W. Against the wind would be P minus W because the wind is acting against the plane. And then the time and then the distance, which is rate times time. So we have two equations and two unknowns. We have a system of equations which we can solve so that you just have P plus W equals and P minus W equals by dividing the first equation by two and multiplying by 12 29ths on the second equation. And then you might get a decimal number. But now to find P, I'll have to divide by 2 on both sides. And then to find W, I have P plus W is 555, and then solve for W. So I got my solution by doing exactly what I've been doing before. Even though the problem looked complicated, it wasn't really once you extracted the information, right? All right, let's try some rate problems now that are a little bit different and doesn't have distance involved in it. So if John can paint three apartments in a week and Jean can paint five apartments in two weeks, how long will it take for them together to paint 25 apartments? So it's not quite distance rate problem, but same principle works. So let's make our chart and see what we have. Let T be number of weeks that two painters work together to paint. So we have John can paint three apartments per week. Jean can paint five apartments for two weeks, which means two and a half apartments per week. And so we have T weeks that they're both working. And so our number of apartment painted were 3t by John and 2.5t by Jean. So together, it would be 5.5t. And we also have that together, they, this will be their rate, right? And so we have 25 apartments to paint. And so 25 equals 5.5t, and then solve for t, which gives you four and a half weeks. So it's going to take them four and a half weeks to paint 25 apartments. All right, try this next one on your own. Again, write t equals how long it would take both copiers to print 50 copies of the weekly report. And let's set up the rate. We have all copier 15 minutes to print 50 copies. So 50 copies is our job to do, right? We're doing the same job. So our one job for every 15 minutes. The other machine takes one eighth job per minute. And so if t is the number of minutes, then you have rate times time, rate times time, add them up together, and that should be your complete job. Now, set up the equation and solve for t. So it should take you 5.22 minutes to do this new report if you use both machines together. And that will be your final answer.